Okay, welcome back to our tutorial series. Today we are going to be talking about camera objects um, and how to use them to pan the camera over during cutscenes, um, to follow other characters, to follow your own player during a cutscene, um, all sorts of things with cameras. We're also going to be talking a bit about doors in the process. So to start with, we are going to be editing the scene that we have been working on. We've been working on the starter scene. You choose your starter, you come out, you fight your rival right here, and then your rival walks away and disappears right here off screen. Well, instead, we are going to have the camera follow your rival. Your rival is going to go into the house, open the door into the house, disappear here, and then the camera is going to follow all the way back and it's going to stop at the player. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. Um, so to start with, we are going to open up our scripts. This is the script that we have, we've been working on for Little Root. Um, of course, it'll be in the description. So this is our rival battle over script that we are um, running after the battle is over from the trainer battle single macro that we used um, to initiate the trainer battle. So this is the only script that we're going to be editing. Um, well, we're going to be creating a couple movement scripts, but this is the only script we're actually going to be changing. So lock all is how we started it. Now we applied this movement to May after, you know, um, the battle is over because we wanted May to walk off screen. But now, as soon as we apply the movement, we are going to spawn a camera object. You can do it before if you want to, but it doesn't really matter. Now this special here is the most important part of the uh, of the camera. So how it works is, you know, we have our specials in our specials.inc that we can call. This is where they're defined for us to use in our Pori script and our .inc. But this is where it's actually created in this field specials.c. And as you can see, what this does is it creates an object variable from this function that spawns a special object with some parameters. Now these parameters are, it has the graphic of a little boy, and that's all the camera is at the end of the day, is the is the kid, the, the boy one, um, that is the youngster that is used, and then they have a movement type face down, it doesn't really matter. The object event ID camera, this is important though, this is the object ID that they're given. Instead of having one that's based on the map, they have a set object ID um, and that is given passed through this parameter and this is what we're going to use the movement command on. Um, and then it initiates it where our player is. Um, it sets it to invisible and then sets the camera object to follow this sprite. So that's what happens when we create a camera. We are spawning a youngster object and then we're attaching the camera that usually follows the player to this object and then we can move this youngster around you know, using our movement scripts and the camera will follow the youngster. So we move the youngster around and then when we're done, we move the youngster back and then we disconnect it um, and reconnect it to the player using the other special um, remove camera object here, which as you can see, it says camera object set followed sprite ID, get player avatar sprite ID. So it's going to set the, um, the ID of the thing that the camera is following to the player now, and then it's going to remove the old object, remove the youngster from the game. And that's all that one does, and we call that as well at the end of what we do. So that's cameras in a nutshell, but of course we want to actually see how it functions. So we are going to, now we're going to apply the same movement to the camera ID. Um, we can make our own movement for this if you want to, technically, because May is going to be right here and we're going to be right here. It's going to, you know, spawn the youngster here, but May is going to start here, so they're going to move slightly offset as they go along. Um, so the May is not going to be in the center of the camera in our case, but you can change that if you want to. You can make the youngster move one to the left and then follow the exact one. You know, you can do that however you please. Um, but we are just going to do it like this, and then the weight movement is after. If we put this weight movement up here, May would move, and then the camera would move. We want the weight movement after both, because then they'll move in conjunction with each other. It'll, you know, it'll add both of these functions to the callback, and it'll do them whenever, it, you know, the game's updating, but it'll wait for this script until both of the, it'll wait to continue until both of these are done. Um, so that is important to have the weight movement at the right spot. Um, now, doors in the game, 
Uh, so each door is, you know, it has its own meta tile um, behavior, and those meta tile behaviors allow them to allow them to open, you know, when we're walking onto them um, as the player. But obviously, when we're doing a cutscene, we're not, you know, using that meta tile behavior. We have to manually open the doors. Luckily, there are some macros available to us. Um, and they're as simple as open door and closed door. And the parameters that are passed are the x, y position. You can see them in the event.inc file that we've been in many times. Um, and the x, y, as we know in Pori map, we can see um, at the bottom left of the screen here, um, it is 14.8 for this door. So we open the door at 14.8. We wait for the door animation which is another macro that we use just to wait for the animation to be over before we continue um, into the execution of the script. Then we apply movement, may enter door. Now this one is just a single walk up. So this one here that I have, face down, walk down, walk left times 12, walk up two times. It just makes me walk down, walk up, and then walk up here and stop right here. Um, and then the door is going to open and then May is going to walk in then May is going to disappear and then the door is going to close. So how we do that is we apply the movement to May, wait for the movement to be over because we want to wait before we remove the object otherwise she's just going to like disappear in a second. It's not going to actually look like she walked into the door. Wait movement, remove object, close door 14.8 because that's the door we're using, wait door animation again because it's a different door animation, and then now we move on back to the camera. So now we just need to apply movement to the camera to move back to the player because otherwise the camera will be stuck over here and you'll be able to move around but you might not even see yourself if you've moved the camera too much. Um, so you need to move the camera back to the player. Um, so you do this by applying another movement that's just the reverse basically. Now we changed it up a little bit um, because we had May walk in a little bit of a weird path. So we're just going to be a little more direct and we're going to walk quickly. So we want the camera to pan back really quickly. So we're just going to do walk fast right. So instead of walking slowly like May, we're going to walk at like running speed basically. But the camera is going to uh, move at that speed. We're just going to do that 11 times. So it's just going to go 11 times over. And then we're going to walk diagonally because uh, the camera, it doesn't matter for the camera. It doesn't, it doesn't look bad. Um, because it's invisible. So we walk diagonally southeast. Um, it doesn't need a animation for, you know, our player to walk diagonally because it's just an invisible object. Um, so we walk 11 and then we walk once southeast down to here, which is where our player will be right here. Um, if you want to look at what the player exactly is going to see, um, this player view in the view tab, player view rectangle is useful. Um, I definitely should have brought it up in our last movement video, um, but you, as you can see, this shows where the camera is going to be able to see. So as we start the camera, the camera is going to move down, it's going to move left, 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 left. It's going to stop here actually, and then it's going to move up, up, and then uh, it's going to stop here. So then we want it to move right, 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 right and then we're gonna make it move down and right at the same time using the diagonally southeast. And it's gonna put us right back to where our player is. Um, and then, like I said, we are going to remove, um, we are going to remove the camera object using the special, and then we're gonna continue on with our script. In this case, we just set a flag and set a variable um, that just changed some things about you know the rest of the scripts that we're running. Nothing too important for this video. Um, so that's basically it. These two sections here um, are the camera section and they it's as simple as that for uh, basic camera scripts. Obviously things can get a little more complicated. Um, if you want to move your camera outside into another map, you can. It is possible. Um, but if you are wanting to do more than just moving the camera into a different map, if you want to actually interact with objects, inside of that map, event objects, you need to pass execution of the script over to the map script of that map. You can't just keep running it from this side. You can move the camera up there and look around uh, using the, while still in execution inside of this map scripts, but if you want to actually affect objects in the other map, you have to pass execution over. Um, 
which isn't too hard to do using GoTo's, but uh, it is something to be aware of if you are trying to make your animations a little more complicated than just inside of a specific map. Now we are going to actually look at what the animation was. Um, so we are going to load into our game. We are going to go through our opening sequence. We're just going to pick Trico real quick. We'll get our Pokédex. Get our Pokéballs. Go down. Fight me. Okay, now it is about to start. So we are going to see in a second, our camera is going to spawn. It's going to follow me. It's one off, as we saw. It's going to go up. It's going to go up. It's going to stop here. And then it's going to move all the way over and it's going to go diagonally down, as you saw. And now our camera is where our player is supposed to be. Now it's important to note that because we are using a youngster to have be our camera, sometimes even though the youngster is invisible, it can involve meta tiles. So the it can make puddles in the water. Um, so I had it go over, you know, the um, over the house instead because of that. Um, but that's just something to be aware of. Um, but anyway, uh, that is what the camera panning looks like. That is how we do camera panning inside of PoriScript. Um, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is spawn a camera object and then apply a movement to that object. Make sure to move the camera back to where you want it to be and then remove the camera. Pretty easy. The doors as well, super simple. Uh, um, not too hard at all. So that is basic camera panning and basic door animations. So we are going to wrap up the video with that. If you have any comments, make sure to leave them below the video or on our Discord. Or if you have any suggestions for future videos, do the same. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one.